the process of watching this video, Patrick Kelly, somewhere I must have seen something different, but the Adams motor is, again, pulsing two, hors two coils in the horizontal position here in series to drive it, and the other four are collecting the power. Somewhere in the process of understanding the Adams motor, I, I must have seen it differently again. I don't know why, but I thought he built it like this, where he had two coils on the perimeter, on the on the, on the horizontal plane driving. He actually had four coils, four drive coils driving it. Two on the horizontal axis and the other two on the vertical. The two on the horizontal, I thought, was receiving the forward power voltage and the tour on the vertical should be receiving the flyback uh, power well anyway you can uh, you can add this to the Adams motor basically you can add another two coils on the vertical side here capturing the flyback from the horizontal coils there are drive coils remember so that way you're driving this with not with with four coils instead of two and you're, you're doing it for the price of one pulse uh, now I'm not saying to pulse four coils in series what I'm saying is to pulse two coils in series on the horizontal axis take the reverse flyback that happens from those two coils channel it to another set of drive coils on the vertical axis since the flyback is virtually instantaneous, you pretty much can keep your your drive coils and your your drive coils a, on a 180 degree horizontal and you know 180 degree vertical axis because the pulses the flyback is so fast you don't have to really adjust the position of your second set of drive coils. <clears throat> Well, anyway, that's an idea for the Adams motor here. I thought I'd throw that, in, that idea in there. And you could easily add that here without interfering with everything else. Just thought I'd mention that. Okay. The generator coils in his drawing are very nearly square. Next, you need to notice the proportions of the rotor magnet. They're very much alike. Robert Or the drive battery. So far, this attack cut off causes a magnetic field in the generator coils which boosts the rotor on its way instead yet it's a very important greater than the width of the core which act as pickup coils this is robert's drawing of his arrangement you'll notice a number of things here the four generator coils are mounted physically on a disc or a ring where while the two drive coils are separately mounted on their own mounts. This means that the gap between the generator coils and the drive coils can be adjusted while the motor is running. Also, you'll notice that the width of the core of the uh, collector or generator coils is very much greater than the width of the core of the so-called drive coils. The generator coils in his drawing are very nearly square. Next, you need to notice the proportions of the rotor magnets. They're very much longer than they are wide, separating the outer north poles from the inner south poles. However, a point which seems to escape most people is the fact that a critical part of the design is the technique of cutting off the output power at the appropriate moment. Cutting off the output power sounds all wrong to most people, and yet it's a very important thing to do. The reason is the same as for the drive coils. The 
If you don't cut off the electrical connection, then the attraction between the solid iron cores of the generator coils and the rotor magnets tries to pull the rotor magnet magnets back towards the fixed generator coil cores, an effect which is called drag. But if the output current generated in the coils by the passing magnets is cut off at just the right instant, then the back EMF generator by that cutoff causes a magnetic field in the generator coils which boosts the rotor on its way instead of dragging it backwards. Robert also rectifies that back EMF pulse Going and here. takes it back to this, the drive battery. This is so far, this is a highly efficient system. The drive coils, four of them. And your pulse DC, positive, negative on the horizontal coils. And then once this negative opens up, it becomes a positive. Tap off of it right here with a diode, high voltage. And Okay, this becomes a positive <clears throat> right here. Right now it's a negative from your four DC pulse. Here's your positive DC. And here's your negative side of this series set of coils here. When you open the switch on this, this positive will become a negative. Okay, and you're going to connect it here. That positive will become a negative. So I'm going to put here, uh, hold on a second. Green is your flyback channel your reverse polarity flyback from the previous coil that was forward pulsed so this bottom coil is the one receiving the flyback oops I messed up sorry control Z I'm sorry the, the vertical coil is the one Receiving the flyback, okay? And so on. This is my uh, thoughts on the Adams motor upgrade. So, on the Adams motor, you just have red is your Ford your battery power is red okay that's your your powers is coming from the battery is in red Your power is in red from your battery. As you can see in red, it's plus and my plus here, minus on this end. When the switch is opened, the flyback occurs. And it goes into the coil that's in green.
That diode is a high voltage diode. And when you open the switch on the red coil that's receiving four DC voltage from your battery, which is our traditional energy, the positive of your DC power on that coil will turn into a negative right here. That's why you're going to have it connected here. Okay. Now, what's stopping your positive from connecting here and charging up these this coil is in green, the vertical, is um, going to be this diode blocks your positive flow. As you can see, your positive will go through this coil because there is no nothing stopping it. If the positive goes through this coil, it gets stopped right at the high voltage diode. You can add a second diode here, a low voltage diode if you want. Makes no difference. I mean it might make a difference, I don't know, but You can add a low voltage blocking diode here if you want. If you're concerned about your low voltage crossing your high voltage diode in the opposite direction, go ahead, you know, add it. That's what I did in the other circuit. So basically this positive will not be able to flow in this direction because of these diodes. It cannot make it to uh, this negative. But the flyback that occurs here is going to happen right here. This, neg this negative that you gave this coil will become a positive on this side of the coil during the flyback and that positive will flow out these diodes this direction okay into the coil charging it and it will reach the negative side of the flyback right here that's why it works like that okay I just wanted to draw this this is my idea that comes from the Adams motor uh, concept I just, uh, it occurred to me this would be a better way to uh, improve upon the design. Um, with the Adams motor, you know, these are four drive coils, and he has four um, stator coils also, which you can also add that here. On the uh, other angle here. You know? Put four stator coils in series. Yeah, good point. 